Ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time we find ourselves in anticipation of one of the most well-known and most esteemed film award ceremonies, it's the Oscars. And no, I'm not talking about that guy who was in court for shooting his girlfriend. Although I do think his performance, what with the crying, the vomiting, the tragedy, and the incessant puppy dog eyes, Oscar Pistorius should have gotten an Oscar nomination for his role as Legless in Bullet for My Valentine. Unfortunately though, the slot was already taken up this year by the theory of everything. So sorry Oscar, you're not really gonna be walking away with this one. Uh, we have shots fired on a YouTube video. Okay, that's my little speech. Told you I was ADHD. Back to the celebration of great work. The following is an overview of the Oscars main card event, the Best Picture Award. One of the nominees this year is The Theory of Everything. It follows the story of Stephen Hawking and how he overcame his disability from Lou Gehrig's disease, published a revolutionary study that changed our understanding of the world, but most importantly, found the love of his life, which enabled him to do so. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that this is going to be an outstanding film. It's got Felicity Jones, who makes my heart beat faster than a drum and bass song, and Eddie Redman, whose acting can draw motion from a grumpy accountant who doesn't really like movies. That's two Brits that make this movie one worth seeing. It's got a good shot, but in my personal opinion, it's up against a much better shooter. Of course, I'm referring to the shot at the Golden Man by talented actor Bradley Cooper and top-notch director Clint Eastwood, who practically knows how to shoot stuff with a camera just as competently as the deadliest sniper in US history, Chris Kyle, whom the film is about. Yes, sir, we're talking about American Sniper. Great acting, great directing, great style, great story, gripping, yet also educational. Violence, but in the way that provokes moral and ethical debates. BAM! This is one movie you've got to see. Best of luck to Mr. Eastwood, it's my dream to be in something of such a high caliber. Martin Luther King also had a dream, and not only did it come true, but it's now an Oscar-nominated movie. Selma is a film I've been waiting too long to be made. And by the looks of things, it's really gonna bring honor to those who help bring justice and equality into America. The film is about the... Oh, there go. <laughs> the film is about the civil rights movement and King's campaign to secure equal voting rights via an epic march from Selma to Montgomery and Alabama. Alabama, 1965. <coughs> it stars David Oloyo, Tim Roth, and it has Oprah in it, guys. Oprah. Nuff said. Nuff said. Oh boy, is this year intense. Oh boy, oh boy, is boyhood also barren fruit on the grapevine as a film research topic, which was filmed over 12 years. 12. But I do think lead actor L.R. Coltrane may have the greatest home movie to show his kids one day. Director Richard Linklater has created a masterpiece of film art in the story of a young boy who goes through boyhood from age five to age 18. The dedication alone of filming such an event will make it a strong Oscar nominee. 12 years, time flies now, doesn't it? Where's that British guy? I just wish that someone took like, professionalism and like, paid me to film 12 years of my life. And he's still here. Speaking of things that take flight, Birdman, featuring Michael Keaton, has also squawked up much noise, directed by Alejandro Gonzalez and starring an Iron Cut cast featuring the likes of Emma Stone, Zach Galifianakis, and Edward Norton. Birdman tracks a washed up actor who once played an iconic superhero as he battles his ego and attempts to recover his family and career in the days leading up to his own risky Broadway play. These guys are not playing games with their movies this year. There might be one playing game, and that would be The Imitation Game, starring Benedict Cumberbatch. Hold up. Hold up, Benedict Cumberbatch do that name. Sounds so British and formal. Are you sure like he isn't a sir or whatever? Yo, baby, I don't know, maybe. But I sure know what I'm having for breakfast tomorrow. Yo, what? <laughs> An eggs, Benedict Cumberbatch, yo. <laughs> ah, but dude, no, seriously, you can't mess with anybody who's played Sherlock and Smog the Stupendous Dragon at the same time, man. That's just not wise. What can I say, man? This new movie's on fire. <laughs> that one was good, that one was good. But did it come about- Seriously, that name though. He plays mathematician Alan Turing in his attempts to crack the Enigma code during World War II, destroy the Nazi war machine, and potentially win the war alongside many other fellow mathematicians. Will he manage? Watch to find out. I mean, I had enough trouble with algebra in school. Can you imagine trying to break a complex mathematical code without the internet? Intensity, right there. And Kira Knightley, also quite a stunner in this- I gotta stop having open auditions. There are parts of me that are mature, I guarantee you. And Maturity seems to be exactly what the Grand Budapest Hotel is about. Kind of. Famous concierge Gustav H, played by Ralph Fiennes, and his trusty lobby boy, Zero Mustafa, played by F. Murray Abraham, go on many mischievous missions, including the seduction of old ladies, and wild hotel shenanigans. Directed by Wes Anderson, this film looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Did I just hear seduction of old ladies? I think that's enough to give you a little bit of a 
Whiplash. The last on the list is Whiplash, a rocking film directed by Damien Chazilla, starring Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons about a young drummer who joins a die-hard music conservatory and meets an instructor who demands nothing but the best from him and will push him to every extreme to uncover his potential. Scares the pun, but the trail is rather hard hitting, you know, not just drums, but there's a little bit of beating up other actors there. It's quite an intense decision between choosing a career over your own life. Sometimes I question whether I should let my imagination loose. One thing is for sure though, all of these nominations are fantastic contenders for Best Picture this year, as I'm sure you've heard. It's gonna be a real tough one. Here's where I need your help. I'm making a YouTuber challenge bet on my predictions this year. Based on how many I get right or wrong, I will partake in the various challenge mentioned below. Thank you all for watching, that's all I have to say. Enjoy the Oscars, guys. I will see you next time for part two, 2014, a full memoir. Make it easy on yourself and subscribe. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I love y'all, AG to G, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys, have a great day.